Hey, hi folks, it's Marty here again. Um, I said that I'm going to go through this really, really fast. I was trying to have a video that uh, that people could pass to their friends to think about a real non-threatening video because what I want to share is the teachings of Jesus and his brothers and the apostles as a base starting point when dealing with the Paul issue. I've come up with over this last year or so 119 pages or subjects per page or whatever it is uh, of actually proving what the scriptures are saying and how the whole story unfolds right there if you would start comparing what the different uh, pe speak people are saying. So I have seven different proofs here and I'm just going to read them fast so you can either write the verses down uh, but the biggest thing I want you to look up the context and some of these are the ESV Bible and some of them are the King James Bible and so uh, I don't know sometimes when I'm studying I just jump back and forth sometimes. <laughs> okay the first proof, proof number one, the apostles, 12 of them, John 6, 7, 6, verse 7, 70. <laughs> Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a demon? John 15, 27. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. See, these are criteria that Jesus is setting up that his disciples are learning. Matthew 19, 28. Jesus said unto them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal, of all things, when the Son of Man is sitting at his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, according to the twelve tribes of Israel. Acts 1.21, the disciples knew this. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Acts 1.23 and 24, and they appointed Joseph called Barassus, I'm bad with names, so just forgive me, who was surnamed Justice and Mathis. And they prayed and said, Lord, which knows the hearts of all men, show us which of these two shall be chosen. See, Jesus made it clear to the apostles. He had two backup men. There was no room for Paul from the start, and he cannot be an apostle. The biggest thing that I hear people say, oh, they cast lots. Study up casting lots. Father accepted that all through the Old Testament. It was a common practice. It was not a stupid thing. But Paul, well, you'll find out. Anyway, Jude 17b. But you must remember, beloved, this is Jude. This Jude is a powerful book. The predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, proof number two. See, we're talking about Jesus and his disciples. What is he training them for? But let's hear what Paul has to say, because Paul has his own doubts. If you start looking for it, Paul is honest once in a while. 1 Corinthians 9.1 Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Acts 9, chapter 9, verses 4, 7, and 8 He heard a voice saying, hearing a voice but not seeing anyone. Eight, his eyes were open, but he saw nothing. Luke records what Paul told him secondhand. Because Luke wasn't there during the thing. So everything that is recorded, Paul is telling people because they weren't there. Now if you look at it, all three of his testimonies by Paul says only he heard a voice. That's another good study for you is look up the, th the three testimonies and compare the words and check it out. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 2. If to others I am not an apostle, what others is he talking about? At least I am to you, Corinthians, for you are the seal of my apostleship to the Lord. Okay, no, no, no. This does not qualify him as one of my, of one by people's opinions. Jesus set the qualifications. He knows that he does not meet Jesus' qualifications. He is confessing something here, but nobody wants to catch it. Because that's another study. Look at boasting. Do the word boasting. You'll find about Paul doing all kinds of boasting. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. Now I would remind you, brothers, this is Paul, of the gospel I preached to you. That's the key. Which you received on which you stand and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you. See Paul's reasoning? 
1 Corinthians 15, 8. Last of all, as to one untimely born, that's him, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostle, unworthy to be called, because he did not walk, he's unworthy because he did not walk with Jesus. He did not see him die, he did not see him raised. I persecuted the church. True but misleading statement in context. If you read that, he's making a true statement. And he also admitted, I did not walk with you. I did not meet his criteria. Acts 18.6. This is Paul's words. And when they opposed and reviled Paul, he shook off his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your heads, Jews. I am innocent for now on, from now on, from now on, I will go to the Gentiles. In Corinthians, at that time, the Jews knew the Torah and Paul preached against it. Now you got to watch it. Whenever, whenever Paul is preaching stuff, you'll keep thinking the Jews are going after him. But watch how the Jews respond to uh, Peter. Okay, Romans 11, 13, and 14. <clears throat> now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. He wants to make the Jews envious, so he uses manipulation. One twisted thing after another. 1 John 2.19 They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. See, that's one of the things people say, well, they're not talking about Paul. How do you know? If it's a test from God, why would he give away the answer of who they're talking about? Proof number three. <clears throat> a voice claimed to be Jesus. What did Jesus warn us about? Paul has three conflicting stories of his testimony. What did Jesus warn us about? Matthew 24, 24 through 26, verses 24 through 26. For a false Christ and a false prophet, that doesn't always mean it's a person. A false Christ is a belief. You are believing in a false version of who he really is and his character. For false Christ and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect, those who elect to follow him. See, that's another thing. People, the church teaches you wrong on that. They think, oh, God picks and chooses who he wants. He says, no, I elect to follow the Father and repent. Verse 25, see, I have told you before, if they say to you, look, he is in the wilderness, ah, do not go out. If they say, look, he is in the inner room, do not believe it. Where did Paul meet this bright light? Matthew 24, 30. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Anytime Jesus has been either coming or going from the earth, it's always been recorded throughout. Look up the word clouds. Look up the word clouds. That's a very good subject matter study. See, if you study subject matters, you'll learn a lot more than if you just read the Bible verse by verse and book by book. Matthew 26, 24, Jesus said unto them, Thou hast said, nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, coming in the clouds of heaven. Jesus takes his place until the end. Mark 14, 62, I said, I am, or Jesus said, <laughs> I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. When will they see him next? Jesus is now all God. He's set aside the flesh and he is all deity. And he sends his angels to do his work. <clears throat> okay, the last, the last personal visit with his disciples was in Acts 1, 9 through 11. So Luke records this. When he had said this, as they were are watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up t toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking forward toward the heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you see him go into heaven. There's no bright lights. 
Matthew 24, 5. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and they will meet, lead many astray. Paul's not saying he's the Christ, but he says he knows who the Christ is, and he knows you follow his gospel, and you'll follow the wrong Christ. Acts 7, 55. But he, Stephen, Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost, gazing into heaven, and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. So where is Jesus, and who witnessed this? Then they stoned him. Because he testified to them. He testified. He's a witness to it. Acts 2.33, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God. Revelations, this one got me too. Revelation 22.16, because he talks to John the Beloved, the last disciple when he was in Pergamos, the prison. He says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you about all these things. Jesus did not even appear to his own best disciple that leaned on him all the time. Get off of me. <laughs> You're spilling food on me. Uh, I can't imagine how those guys all ate. I mean, they're still guys. Anyway, Acts 10, 7. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his people. So look up the context. But he was a Gentile. And uh, even Jesus didn't talk to him. A voice. Acts 10, 10, B. Peter fell into a trance and had a vision. Peter, his main man. He didn't even appear to. Acts 22, 8. See, I'm doing a comparison, guys. The people who spent with him for three years versus Paul who persecuted the church and seen a bright light on the thing for however many minutes. Acts 22, 8. A bright light came in the desert on the road. Paul said, Who are you, Lord? He said, I am Jesus of Nazareth. I want you to search that out. No place does Jesus ever refer to himself as Jesus of Nazareth. He always refers to himself as Son of Man. Look it up. That's a word study guy right there. I love word studies. 2 Corinthians 11, 14. And no wonder, for even Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. Paul was misled by the light. Paul's first recorded miracle was to blind a man, just like he was blinded by the angel. Proof number four. This is a longer one. <clears throat> it's criteria. What's the criteria for an antichrist? This is in 1 John 2, Verse 18 and 19. Children, it is, it is the last hour. These guys are, are writing in you know, uh, current time. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour for them. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they are not of us. That's the first criteria. Okay, let's have Paul. Paul's going to back that up. He's going to back up his criteria. Acts 9, 26 through 31. And when he had come to Jerusalem, he attempted to join the disciples. And they were all afraid of him. And they did not believe, because they did not believe, that he was a disciple. Because Jesus has already prepared him in the beginning what the qualifications were, so they knew he couldn't possibly be a disciple. People go, oh, they were afraid of him. It's like, no, these guys weren't afraid. They were baptized in the Holy Ghost on Pentecost. And when Jesus left, there's one verse in John where he says he breathes the Spirit upon him. Barnabas brought him and declared his testimony and preaching. Good old Barney, he's trying to back him up. But what they do? They send him back off to Tarsus. Note to keep, note, that's a note to keep in mind. So that the one thing that's coming up, they, they get rid of him, first of all, back to his home place. So the church through all Judea and Galilee and Samaria had peace and was built up and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it multiplied. So that's something now. Once they get rid of him, there's no fighting and bickering. Everybody's going on though. The Spirit was working. They're preaching what Jesus taught them. Acts 21, 27, and 28. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, seeing him, Paul, in the temple, stirred up the whole crowd and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaching everyone everywhere against the people and the law and this place. This, is a his, this history of this event is very serious. You will see why later. See, so again, right there. 
you, how's the what's the what's the examples or, or how's the the growth of the church with the apostles and then with with Paul. Criteria number two in this uh, proof area, First John four two through three, verse two and three. By this we know that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This, this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and now is in the world already. Note the word flesh, which is coming up. Romans 8.3, Paul said, says by sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin the word the greek word there is the figure of or image of a representation of why didn't he just say he sent him in the sinful flesh why does he say likeness of he's the only one that uses this this verbiage this tone off you know, no one else uses that so, uh, so. Why did he just say, yeah, sinful flesh? <clears throat> okay, Philippians 2, 7 and 8. <clears throat> Paul says, but emptied himself by, form, by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being born in the human form. See, all that error is in the Greek word 344 in Strong's Concordance is external appearance of. He's not admitting it. Why did it, again? Why does he use the word likeness? Criteria number three. First John four six. First John's a great book. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know that the Spirit of Truth and the Spirit of Error. Okay, this is John the Beloved writing this. Okay, what's Paul say about John and the apostles? Listen to how he talks about them. Galatians two six. <clears throat> and from these apostles, who seem to be influential, what they were makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. Now there's another thing right there. That's another teaching. If you start doing word searches, you're going to find out that Paul's the only one that says that. I'm going to prove it here in a couple minutes. Galatians 1.16 I did not immediately consult with anyone, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. So, see, separate time. He's confessing. You got to so you don't believe his words because you think differently about what you're taught about it. But I went away into Arabia and then returned again to Damascus. Acts 10:34. God is no respecter of persons. Paul said this, not God. I want to show you one thing. Leviticus 26:9. For I, God, have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. And that the Hebrew word means lift it up. Respect means. Although the Bible, all through the Bible, God picks and chooses who, who will do what he wants them to do, even the ones who fail. God is a respecter of persons. There's, oh, look that up, man. There's so many verses on that. Matthew 19, 28. Jesus said to them, the disciples, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will, when the Son of Man will it in his will be in his uh, I need to rewrite that in his glorious throne. You who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the th the twelve tribes of Israel. Followed me, those who followed me. See, number five. We're almost getting half. We're halfway. <clears throat> These are proof texts. Paul, 11 of Pharisees, Matthew 16, 6. Jesus said to them, Watch and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Galatians 1, 14. Paul says, I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age, among my people. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. Acts 23, 6, B. Brothers, <laughs> You hear that? This is Paul talking to the Sanhedrin. Brothers, note, I am a Pharisee and the son of a Pharisee. No place have I found it, I've been looking for it, where Paul renounces his, his place as a Pharisee. How much of that adding and subtracting from Scripture was held over? They were known for changing the laws. Mark 8, 15. <clears throat> 
And he, Jesus, continued to caution them, saying, Watch out, beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. That's a key word there. The Herodians. The Herod. you got to watch this. Again, this, you need to study history way back. Acts 13.1 Now there were in the church of Antioch prophets and teachers. This guy, that guy, and the other guy. A bunch of names I can't say. And a longtime friend with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. You're going to see this. You're going to see how they're treating him. Acts 23.35 And he, Phoenix, commanded him, Paul, to be guarded in Herod's very nice tent of the commander, commander in chief. There's a word there, I don't know what it is, but <clears throat> so they were taking care of him real well. Acts 12, 1 through 2. Oh, you have to remember that. Remember when they said uh, he was looking around in the, the Sanhedrin, there was the Pharisees and Sadducees, and, and then when he was getting beat or something, he, he pulled out the Romans card. He said, Hey, I'm a Roman citizen by blood and not by purchase or something. And so, uh, you know, he knows how to pull the, pull the cards and play the game. See, he was in the game for a long time. Acts 12, 1 and 2. After the time, that time Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Paul was there. Why didn't he kill Paul? Hmm. I'm just, you got to question this stuff, guys. Acts 12, 6 through 17. You need to read this here, okay? God respected or rescued Peter. Was Paul a friend of Herod and why? Was he all things to all men? He, he brags about that in several places. He does, he's, he, he's a, he can change his ways. I used to think it was a good thing. I uh, realized studying it's a bad thing. Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets who come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravaging wolves. Romans 11, 1. Paul, I am an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin. Genesis 49, 27. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf. Father in heaven gave us all kinds of hits, but we got to change our presupposition to what we were taught about the Bible and not and figure out what exactly it says. Philippians 3 5. Paul said, Paul said he is of the tribe of Benjamin and a Pharisee. He never renounced being a Pharisee. He told the council in the present tense, in the present Greek tense, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. And you've heard, remember 1 John 2.19, they went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. These guys are trying to straighten out. You just got to start, you got to compare Paul against uh, the, the other guys. Okay, this one got me. This, this was interesting. I was tipped off to this and I started studying. Again, a word search. Disciples, 72, remember? Uh, Jesus sent out 72 of them, and this is what they said in Luke 10, uh, verse 19 to 20. Behold, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The new disciples, based on the instruction given to Jesus, came back in Luke 10, 17b. Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Hint, hint. James, verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. That's the conditions. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That brings me down to Paul now. What's Paul have to say about this? What was Paul's ongoing problem with Satan? 2 Corinthians 12, 7b. A thorn was given to me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. <laughs> like that really worked. I got a whole three or four subject pages of all the bragging he does. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with it, all power and false signs and wonders. Paul knows all this stuff, guys. First hand. 1 Thessalonians 2, 18. But Satan hindered us. How and why? How and why? We just said, James just said, you resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Paul, Acts 9, 25. But Paul's disciples took him by night and let him down through an opening in the wall. One of the things, if you look at the context, this is shortly after he, his conversion or whatever it was. 
where did he get his disciples at so fast? Were they just men that follow him? So it makes me wonder. I don't know what the time period is between the events. Acts 13, 11, B. And you will be blind, unable to see the sun for a time. Paul's first recorded miracle was to blind the guy. But now you really need to watch this. You need to read this. How how look at how Paul dealt with this guy in Acts 13. Let's see how Peter dealt with this guy in Acts 8, 22. Peter told him to repent for trying to buy God. That was Simeon the magician. Peter never threatened him. Peter never blinded him. He wanted him to repent. He preached the gospel of Christ. Acts 5, 4. Peter told Ananias Sapphira, you have lied to God. Peter never threatened them. God took their life. Jesus never blinded anyone. Only the devils does that. 1 Corinthians 5, 5. You are to deliver, this is Paul speaking, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his spirit may be saved. Is Paul working with Satan? 1 Timothy 1, 19 and 20. Some have made shipwreck their faith, among whom are Herarius and Alexander, whom I handed over to Satan that they may not they may learn not to blaspheme. He handed them over to Satan. He says it right here, guys. Paul says that. 1 Timothy 5, 15. For some have already strayed after Satan. What does that mean? They want to, I don't know. Acts 26, 18. This is Paul. To open the Gentiles' eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Jesus never talked like that. He wants them to turn from Satan to God, but yet he turns, turns them over to him. Acts 25, 15. The claims Jesus said adds to testimony. Okay. If you read, again, look at all the three different testimonies that Paul has about, as he gives it out, he keeps adding and changing them. 1 Peter 5.18b, But he who is born of God pr protects him. God, born of God protects him, and the evil one does not touch him. Was Paul born of God? How was the evil one harassing him and tormenting him? I just want to ask, ask these questions, people. Ask them, look them up, get into the Bible, dig this out. Grace given to Paul. The last one, proof number seven. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and everyone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon it, for no one lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. He claims that. See, he always, if you watch, he always tacks on Jesus at the end to certify it, to make it sound right. You say, oh, I don't believe you, Marty. Well, look at verse 3, chapter 3, verse 14. If the one that, if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If everyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only through fire. That's where the ones saved always say people come in. Romans 2, 16. On that day when, according to my gospel, God judges the secrets of men's hearts by Christ Jesus. That's where they imputed it, righteousness. We imputed his, he took our punishment, he imputed his righteousness. That's, well, there's so much on that. That's a whole other subject. I got pages on that. As I've shared, I got 119 pages that I can email people if they want it. Romans 16.25, Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Oh, he separates that right there. It's, it's in Paul's own words. He separates my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the mystery that was kept secret for long ages. Why did he say the gospel of Jesus? He splits the two up. The secret of all ages. The Father's never done that. <laughs> That's another study, guys. Look up secrets. Acts 20, 24b. The ministry that I received from the Lord to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. First of all, there was no witnesses of that. Because if you read his testimonies, he says the guys around him didn't hurt something, but they didn't know what was said. It sounded like thunder. <coughs> no one else can witness this. There's no proof. Every time Jesus went to the garden or went somewhere, he always took someone the Mount of Figuration. He took people with him. He always took a witness to verify what he said. 
That's a key. Matthew 24, 24 through 26. For false Christs and false prophets, okay, you see that, go up, so on and so forth. Colossians, or Colossians, Colossians 1, 6b. Since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. That's Paul speaking. See, he separates it. He never talks about repentance. 1 Thessalonians 1, 4. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with, God, with the gospel. Which gospel is he talking about? And how does he, how can he prove he's been approved of God? See, we think miracles and signs and wonders, but Jesus said, no, don't, don't believe people with signs and wonders. You've got to see if it, if it corresponds with what he preaches and teaches. 2 Thessalonians 2.14 To this he has called you through our gospel so that you go on and so forth. Ephesians 3.2 That you have heard of the stewardship of the grace of God that we was given to me for you. I want to ask you a question. Why would Jesus train 14 men for three years to carry out a ministry and not tell them of the gospel of grace alone? Why would he change it? Repentance is all through the Old Testament. Repentance is, I think it was 125 times in the New Testament. Why would Jesus spend three years teaching somebody, some guys to carry on the ministry, and even send someone ahead like John the Baptist to prepare the way, and change everything because of one guy, and give it just to him? I was taught that, that Paul was the 13th disciple or uh, apostle, or he should have taken the place, but it wouldn't. Based, do you believe what Jesus says, or do you believe what Paul says? That is my challenge to you. If you think Paul's such a great guy, you prove it by taking these verses and things and proving that they're not true. See, you can pick and choose. I can go through and I can make all this. I, I, I found a guy on there that has, oh my goodness, he had a dozen pages of proof text, verse after verse, how great Paul was and how it was strictly for the Gentiles and how all this other stuff. But he never addressed the other verses. See, he totally believes that he only listens to Paul. He says that in his thing. And I learned so much from that guy because I wanted to see how do people believe and follow Paul. And that teaches me how and where that they, they don't listen to Jesus. They don't listen to the, the other apostles and Jesus' brothers. They don't listen to the Old Testament and the prophets. They are Paulinian people. They follow Paul as their Messiah. Paul is the one that has his own gospel leading them to Christ and all the Old Testament and all the other verses just live by the 13 books. And that's really sad. Father God, I ask that your Holy Spirit will guide and direct and, and let your words... Uh, the Bible has God's words in it. But he also has a test in there. He also puts someone who sounds so perfect that makes everybody think that his words is God's words and it over supersedes what Jesus said. Father, help us to follow your son and follow the commandments and follow the Torah. That's a whole other subject there. Thank you that you will enlighten and give people knowledge who truly seek you with all their heart, mind, soul, and will. And Yeshua's precious name. Amen.